Hey folks, thanks for joining me tonight. Make sure I got the right microphone on here. Hey, welcome back. Another week. Yeah, I'm glad to be here. It's warming up in Colorado. It's a little bit warm in my studio today, uh, putting together all the equipment and stuff. Um, uh, at the end of the day here, I'm feeling a little warm. Uh, got a good demo. I'm excited for the demo tonight. So in Colorado, you know, if you're in the south, you've been, uh, you're been already into summer probably, but in Colorado, we're uh, right in the middle of spring, basically, and uh, the clouds as I drive around have just been amazing. We've gotten a lot of rain, actually, a lot more than normal, and the big clouds, especially tonight, actually, are fantastic outside, and uh, so I'm inspired to paint some clouds. I don't think I've, you know, obviously I've had some clouds in various paintings, but tonight I'll focus the lesson more on uh, clouds specifically and how to paint them just what I know about it, right? I'm no expert, but I'll share with you what I know and what I've learned by painting quite a few of them. So I'm going to be painting an 8x10 tonight on the Jack Richardson pre-primed um, canvases. Link is down below. Hey, I want to remind you too, if you're new to this channel and you don't have my critique list, follow the link down below in the description. I have a nice critique checklist that I use um, and I still find it valuable that when I look at these paintings, I've got these paintings up here. I'm going to have to sign them and varnish them, photograph them, uh, and have a sale here pretty soon, actually. So stay tuned for that. But I will use that self-critique checklist to just um, kind of go through and, and remind myself of what's important and not forget some of the things that are uh, important when we look at our work. We need to be objective when we look at our work. Um, as much as possible. Time does that too, so having them sit up on the shelf here and dry uh, gives me a little break from them too, and then I can assess them a little bit more objectively using that criteria. Uh, so you can click on the link below, get that checklist, and um, hopefully that helps you. So tonight, uh, my photo reference here, well, I'll show you in a minute, uh, just took while I was driving. Um, I do have a habit of pulling over and taking pictures, so it's kind of a nightmare driving with me. I'm a safe driver, but um, I will turn around and park and drive in fields, whatever it takes to get a good reference photo, especially now that I'm on uh, to paint every week here. I need to be sure I've got a stock of good uh, painting references. So, well, uh, without further ado, let's get to it. I'll switch over here in my camera, and uh, here's my scene. You can see it in a little bit here. Um, you know, this is more of a long landscape here. Um, I'm going to grab clouds from, this is going to be a jumping off point, right? I like these clouds. I like these kind of pillowy, fluffy clouds you get and um, how they just hang in the sky. I think that's really neat. The land is going to be our anchor tonight. Uh, secondary thing, we're going to really plant, uh, paint the skyscape. And um, my normal palette you can see there tonight in the lower right. I have a couple of pink fuchsia type colors in there. I'm not sure why I popped those on there. I went camping and did some painting a week ago. And um, I threw those in there just to counter. I, yeah, I remember now. I What I was going to paint had a lot of pine trees in it, all green. So I thought I would use those as modifiers. And honestly, I don't think I touched them once in that painting. It might show. I don't know. Anyway. Um, let me switch over here and I'll start painting. Talk to you in a second. Okay. So, I didn't do any preliminary drawing tonight. Part of that is, um, you know, I do start paintings differently a lot. I don't have a set recipe that I use when I paint. You know, I, I kind of let the scene and what I'm trying to paint speak to me. I think that's important. Um, if you feel more comfortable kind of having a routine and steps that you go through, that's fine too, I guess. So, But I want to teach you guys, or anybody who's watching this that wants to learn, um, uh, that, you know, there's multiple ways you can do it. There's no right way. Don't be afraid. Oil paint is a very forgiving medium, and we can have fun with it, and you can do it. And all that. Okay, I'll uh, get a couple paper towels going here and then I'll mix some paint up. So what I think I'll do is just, um, uh, let's see, I'm using Gamblin's um, Galka Gel for my medium tonight. Just have a little squirt of that. 
and I'm going to get some color going here. I think I'm going to go kind of with a, a warmed up ochre. And the reason is that I do like a little ochre in the sky. And um, while this isn't really going to be what shows through, it will warm up some of those tones a bit here. I'm just going to do this. Uh, I've got a lot of transparent, you know, terps and stuff in here. Um, so the land, I, I, I don't, you know, I want the land to be kind of uh, a little more interesting than this flat shape here. So I'm going to put some trees and such. And in fact, way back there, there might even be some far off trees. So I'm going to make this up a little bit. Doesn't have to be exact. Um, I do want to design a bit with these clouds. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to make one of these, you know, my star up here. And what I'm going to do is just kind of get, get my drawing in place. I like how these clouds generally have a, uh, a flat bottom to them. And so I may as well try to get a little representational with this cloud here. Um, clouds also are in perspective, or linear perspective as well. I'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, I kind of also like how some of these clouds overlap. That creates some, some spatial... Um, relationships, I guess. Sorry, I'm trying to draw accurately as I talk here. I don't want those to be exactly the same. They're pretty close, aren't they? Maybe I'll make this one a little smaller, actually. That's what we'll do. Um, it's kind of unforgiving to wipe on this uh, surface here. You can see it stains it a little bit. It's fine, but, you know, erasing can be maybe a little bit tougher. Um, let's see here. So, uh, when you, when you have clouds that are, you know, overlapping, then it, it clearly tells your viewer that, hey, this one's in front of this one. You know, and maybe there's another one in front of that one. I think I'm going to bring this little potato cloud over here. And I included it just because it's a potato. Now, I, I kind of like to have these shapes connect somehow. I might need to do some more work on that. Um, I'll probably bring some of this. I like the, this cloud in the upper right-hand corner, too. Just as more of a dark. But I'm working on really design right now is what I'm really thinking about more than anything. And as you go further back here, you start to see, you know, some other little cloud shapes. And I'm just going to indicate these as they get further back by the horizon. Um, they get smaller and smaller. So that's your linear perspective thing. And I'm trying to connect some of these shadows in here. And that's what these lines are about. These clouds are going to be pretty small. They're individual little marks way off in the distance there. 
okay? Gives me kind of a picture here. And I think, um, you know, there's some little cues here, little bits of cloud. So I think that's a start. Now, um, you know, one thing that's fascinating about these clouds is that, you know, some of the areas in the cloud are, you know, definitely in the shadow. So I'll try to sketch a little bit of that right here. And in this one, you know, I've got kind of a, a rounded shape here. Remember, these have volume. It's just like anything else. If you were painting a vase or a, a ball or flower or whatever, you know, this has these have volume to them. So, you know, don't forget that. Light plays on them in very mysterious ways, too, which makes clouds really fun to paint, I think. So at least for some of these that are in this picture here, I'm going to get a little bit of that design going on of the light part versus the shadow part. And again, I chose this warm color here to start painting in just because um, I want a little bit of that warmth to show through these clouds. It'll warm up the whole the whole scene. Uh, I'm not quite sure what to do with those little clouds there yet, honestly. They're going to be more stand out because of their highlight than their their shadow shapes, but we'll leave them there. Um, actually, I think I might, I might make these trees a little bigger here in the foreground. Something like that. And then this row in the background is going to, I'll push that back a little bit more. Okay. Yeah, that feels pretty good. I, I like that. Okay, Nature Sketches. Good evening to you. Welcome from Pennsylvania. So Kat's giving us some science here behind the why the flat bottoms are. At the altitude where the rising humid air reaches the... And it's cut off on my screen here just the way I'm <laughs> viewing this. Sorry, Kat. Anyway, go read Kat's comment. She's telling you how that works, the science behind it. Okay, what I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to wipe off some of this. Try not to obliterate my drawing too much, but I don't want too much of that warm paint, um, you know, mixing in with my, my colors. So I know my general drawing. I'm not too worried about that. And this, although that might look scary to you, <laughs> I can still tell where my drawing is. All right. So, you clean my palette off here. And basically, a couple of things I've noticed with clouds. Um, one is that the edges of the clouds tend to be a little darker and grayer, I've noticed. Um, And I think this is because the form is turning away, you know, and clouds are just water vapor, basically. And, um, but if you remember that, I think it's become one of those things that uh, just by knowing that, I've been a little more aware and being able to get some more form. And so I'm going to start here. by scrubbing in some of this. I'm going to keep it kind of thin, I think, probably to start here. And I just used that chromatic black from Gamblin, love that stuff, and white to mix myself kind of a neutral gray. And when you look up here, on my palette, it looks pretty neutral, right? When I look up here compared to that warm uh, underpainting drawing that I put in, that looks really blue. 
So that goes back to that whole thing of color being, temperature being relative. Again, I'm just kind of scrubbing this in lightly right now just to get these, these darker areas in. I can refine all of this, hopefully. Yeah, I can. And I don't like that, uh, you know, this hard edge right here. It's a little too angular. I mean, there's things that I'm going to have to work on here. But let me get some paint going on. And then I'll decide just what I really want to do here. I like this little cloud, how it kind of comes up. A little saddle look to the bottom of it. And just getting some of these darks in here. I am going to warm that up just a hair. And I probably need to darken it too also actually. It needs to be dark enough so that it's standing out of, you know, over the uh, over the blue of the sky. Haley's online. Hi there, Haley. Hola from Foco. Fort Collins. Haley's my daughter. Thanks for joining, Haley. Okay, so this cloud's in front of that cloud. So this looks a little rough for a little bit, and that's going to be that way. It's fine. As far as scratchy brush marks and all of that. That's A-OK. -okay. I will come in and do actually a little bit of clean up and smoothing out with a soft brush to get some of the effects that I'm after here. But I want to get these major value patterns in here. A lot of leeway with clouds. And sometimes you get the, you really do get these kind of um, awesome little accidents that, um, I don't want to use that term too much, but, um, you can get these little cool little effects that happen just like out of the blue and, uh, better to leave them. I'm not sure. I'm going to have to break up this pattern here already. So I'm designing on the fly. But I'll talk you through my thought process on this as we go. So. Let's see. There really wasn't anything over here, was there? Maybe I'll make one up here. We'll see how that goes. Don't want to ad lib too much. Okay, I'll get a little. Why don't I put some ground in here as well? And I think. Um, Well, why don't I, I'll just get some darks in here for my trees. And actually I want something way off of my tree. I've got these trees off in the distance here to begin with. 
So I'm going to start kind of off at the horizon there. You're wondering why I have a violet. Well, I don't want it to be green because these are really do need to set wet back way back there. And um, they're a little bit lighter. And I don't want it quite so purple. I'm going to add some orange to that. We're going to try this though and see, see just how well I can set these trees off in the distance. We'll do something like that. I added a little blue in there just to kind of mix it up. Let's see how this works here. So then for my trees coming forward, I can go ahead and bring those darks into the reds and yellows a little bit more, the green side essentially, but still keep them nice and dark. Okay, and I, I said I'd be putting maybe kind of one in here, I guess. I'm going to just paint these quickly and hopefully get a, uh, you know, kind of a likeness. And this one really kind of in the front. Warm that up. And then the ground plane gets kind of simple, you know, since it's facing up, it's going to collect more of that sky. It's going to be lighter, and you know it looks pretty green and bright, because it's spring. So, I want to um, I want to have some of that, at least in this foreground. We're going to say that tree is kind of in front of this line because we can say whatever we want. Let's throw some of that pink in that green. I never used it last time. Let me just grab some of that see what happens. See, pink, you know, basically is a red, so it's going to neutralize the green being the opposite. Yeah, that adds some interest to it. I don't need to dwell too much in there, but what the heck. Sometimes just being here, being brief, and to the point is all you need to do, get in, get out. Now I might not need to do anything more to this foreground, honestly. We'll see. I'm adding just a little bit of interest here. Some lines to bring into the composition. Who knows, they could be mowed grass or whatever. Okay, now this distant hill back there, um, I'm going to blue down. So by adding blue, that reduces the ratio of yellow in there. Oh, and I got a little heavy on my alizarin permanent. But that's all right. And that seems a little dark, definitely is too dark. Hey, 
and I can add multiple you know little bits of color here test something if I don't like it add something else it's fine but I'm not loving that yet so I'm gonna keep trying to find it here Try a bit, a little more of a ochre in here. See if that makes a difference. Whoop. Okay. And then as that goes up, the base of those trees, I'm envisioning that, you know, being even further away, so I'm going to really lighten that up. And I think I need to make those trees a little better, so go back into those violets. See if I can't make those a little more part of that landscape hill there. I'm going to try to actually bring one a little bit forward even more. It's a little red though, isn't it? Try and neutralize that with some sap green. It's getting a little high there, so I, I need to work on this tree. That's not quite what I want, but I can shape these trees all with my sky as I get back here. Now I can take my palette knife and what I'm doing here is just kind of Smoothing out those distant trees. Um, and just have some fun here with that. Maybe even scrape some of that away. Don't be afraid to try stuff. And I'll come back into that later again. Uh, Kat, what type of day do I think that this is? Um, you know, this was kind of, um, this was late afternoon. Yeah, so you can see those. And, and I think when I took the photo, there must have been, the cloud must have been blocking the direct sun because you don't see a lot of direct sun on the, um, on the landscape. Now, keep in mind, I've just put in the darks basically on those trees uh, for right now. So I might lighten those back up. We'll see if I get the effect that I want or not. Um, but I actually kind of feel like kind of feel like I want these trees back here to be lower. Just scrape the extra paint off of there. And I'll bring a little green into this mixture. Okay. But then I, of course, need to do something here to make that ground plane in the distance look normal. Something just doesn't look right about it, right? I'm 
I'm not finding that quite yet. It's a bit elusive to me. Well, that's kind of nice, actually. Maybe that's abstract enough. I don't need to really get into defining it too much there. We'll see. But I think that's going to be a nice setup for some light lights to come in there. So let's begin. Let me start to add some of that sky in there. And then this will all come together. And with the sky, then I can make more informed decisions about the landscape. But already, I like all the movement in here. You know, it feels, I like that. So let's see, at the base, we have really a, um, you know, a gray-white of clouds. And at the top, we've got the blue sky. So I'm going to, you know, I'm going to make a decent pile of this, kind of a blue-gray. And let's see, that this has to be, uh, it can't be lighter than the clouds. Because those, those lights on the clouds are pretty light. And I want those to stand out. See what I mean there? The highlights on the clouds. And this is a pretty neutral gray here. It is more on the blue side, though. So I'm going to start with what I have here. And let's see how that maps in a bit. Um, okay, and it's going to be lighter in value than the underside of the clouds. So I have it too dark, I think. Yeah. Hey, B.A. Humdinger, welcome. Thanks for joining again. Good to see you. Okay, so I know I can go darker with the underside of those clouds, too. And I know I want my trees at the horizon line to stick out. They're much darker. So I think I can go lighter yet with this. I'm going to neutralize it with a little more just of the chromatic black, too. Okay. Yeah, that feels pretty good there. Um... So, I need to, I think I'm going to get, I think I'm going to get rid of this cloud or that tree there. What tree? It's gone. Again, I want these to be, you know, off in the distance. And so to be off in the distance, they're going to be smaller. Something like that. And I'll have to go back and reshape these trees and all that. That's fine. And I'm just going to come across here for now and do this whole bottom. And I'll put clouds on top of this. A little tricky over my camera gear here to get these fine details in. But I can come back and paint the clouds a little bit, or the uh, the trees rather. Clean those up here. So what I'm really testing out now is what's the relationship between, you know, the land and the sky. And I'm going to start to get some of these clouds in here. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Gamblin's chromatic black is really useful, isn't it? You know, it's a transparent, and it's made with two exact complements. So um, it stays really clean, and it's easy to push, um, you know, in different directions. 
temperature wise. So don't be afraid of using black. Just, you know, black isn't something you should use to darken mixtures necessarily. Black should be a color choice in its own. Oh, well, let's see here. I need, there we go. Need a flat bottom on that one too. Okay, so before I creep up too much into the sky with um, with this color, I'm going to start to modify it. And what happens as I go up? Well, it goes into the blue range a bit here. So I'm going to start to uh, to bring in a little blue. You know, and I want to make it noticeable. And I also want to start to draw these clouds in a bit. Shape the clouds, I guess, with the sky that I'm painting here. So I'm uh, pausing a little bit in between brush strokes just to find my find my way so I'm drawing accurately also yeah I don't like that cloud if you don't like something in your design you can paint over it if there's too much paint you can scrape that paint out and try try again And I'm painting pretty thick here. I'm getting some paint on. I'm not, not worrying about that. And just think of the sky as these little bands. Bands of, of, um, of color and so as you're moving up you're getting more into those you know you got to be changing your color mixture up here okay so that's about the as far as I'm gonna go with that color blue now I really start to get into kind of a more the blue of the sky I'll move up here and start to mix that up now part of uh, the other thing about skies is sometimes to make those the white fluffy clouds pop you have to give them enough value room which means you got to make the sky dark. Don't be afraid to go with a darker blue as you get into that sky. Now I'm just using a flat brush here and it's a long synthetic one of these uh, Princeton Aspens, 6500F is the number on it. Um, you know, I can, I can use it as a, you know, I can draw little thin lines with it. I can do a nice flat shape with it, or I can do kind of roll it along and get this nice lyrical line with it. Nice versatile brush. So I'm going to just, you know, kind of come back here and try to get the shape of that cloud even though I've only put in the, the shadow side of the cloud right now so I'm going back to my outline somewhat. How's this working for everybody? Hopefully good. And then as you are as clouds are above you you see more of the bottom of them. So the dark shadowed underside of the cloud you see more of it for these clouds at the top of the sky or directly you know kind of over you or nearly close to you but as you look down further out toward the horizon you're seeing more of the side of the cloud and less of the bottom so that dark will become more of just a line basically All right, and then as I go further up here, I'm going to actually take this even higher to a really nice deep blue up here. 